Today we're taking a look at the compact and portable Laser Pecker LP4. It's a really interesting dual laser engraver that combines a 10 watt blue diode laser and a 2 watt 1064 infrared laser all in one device. And along with the LP4, we'll be looking at a couple of useful accessories like the rotary attachment that lets you engrave on round objects and the slider bed for larger projects. Everything comes well packaged and in the box we have the user manual with an overview of components and instructions on how to operate the machine. In the combo package, there's also a manual for the slider extension and one for the rotary extension. We've got a couple of material samples to run a few tests, including some wood and a few black aluminium business cards. There's the metal base for the laser with a removable center section, and this base attaches to the motorized upright. At the top, we find two buttons to raise and lower the laser for focusing. There's a magnetic protective cover with an extraction fan, and this attaches to the compact laser module, which feels solid and well built. In the box, we've also got the adjustable motorized rotary head, the adjustable support arm for the rotary setup, and the base for the rotary unit. And there's two metal slider plates that mount onto the motorized slider base. There's everything needed to get started, including an accessory box with tools and assembly hardware, alignment fixtures, a riser that's used together with the rotary tool, a pair of safety goggles that covers both the diode and infrared laser wavelengths, some rotary extension parts that are used to hold objects on the rotary tool, the power supply and the power cable, and the USB cables for the connections. There's also a couple of optional accessories, like the cutting plate for the base, and a USB Bluetooth dongle that allows a Bluetooth connection from the laser to a PC. The LP4 is fairly easy to assemble. The manual has clear step-by-step -step instructions that are easy to follow. It's just a matter of bolting the base plate to the motorized upright with four screws, then attaching the laser unit and tightening the underside knob. There's a lens protective cover to remove, and then the protective shield is installed. This just snaps into place and is held on with magnets. It's got an exhaust fan to remove smoke and fumes from the work surface, although for best fume extraction, you'll want to add the optional hose and air purifier attachment. At the back, there's a few cables to plug in, one for the exhaust fan, one for the motorized upright, and one for the power supply. At the side, a cable management clip neatly holds the cables. And with the assembly complete, we can put on the included safety glasses and it's ready to go for the first project. Now, before we start any projects, we'll take a quick look around the machine and at some of the specs. So the first thing we notice is the build quality. It's a sturdy metal build and everything looks and feels well made. What sets the LP4 apart from other lasers is it's equipped with a dual laser system that combines two lasers inside with a 10 watt 450 nanometer blue diode laser that's good for engraving woods, acrylic, glass, leather, stone, and some metals. And it's also capable of cutting wood up to eight millimeters. There's also the two watt 1064 infrared laser that's good for engraving metals like stainless steel, aluminium alloy, gold, silver, and plastics. At the top, we find the round color touch screen, and this is used to switch between laser modes, preview and rerun stored jobs from the history. And with stored files on the device, this means we can start and operate the machine even without a computer or phone attached. Just below the touch screen and at the front, we have a handy LED light bar that indicates the machine's operating mode. There's a convenient top handle, and this has an emergency stop button built in. At the sides, we have a magnetic dust cover that can be removed if we ever need to access or clean the fans. At the back, we find all the connection ports with two USB-A for five volt output and the USB-C for the PC connection. And there's a port for the power cable. Although you won't find a physical power switch on the machine, but we can shut down the machine into sleep mode via the touchscreen. Underneath, there's two red lasers used for the focusing, and we have a protective cap covering the lens. And towards the back is the mounting point. We can adjust the height of the laser by raising and lowering using the up and down buttons on the electric stand or in the Laser Pecker Design Space app. And it can also be controlled from the Design Space software. The height adjustment is used to focus the laser on the material, 
and when the two red dots combine into one, it's in focus. The LP4 can be operated using a mobile device, either a phone or tablet, or from a desktop computer. A mobile device connects via Bluetooth, while a PC can connect via Bluetooth with the LaserPecker Bluetooth dongle, or connect with a USB cable. The laser can also be used to rerun jobs directly from the touchscreen without a PC or mobile connected, as the device stores a history of previous engraving jobs. The engraving area of 120 by 160 millimeters is a good size for small engraving projects, and we can open up the base plate, enabling it to engrave on larger size materials that might not fit on the base. It's a highly modular and expandable device that should be able to cover most small DIY engraving projects. If you do want to work on something slightly larger, the slider extension accessory expands the workspace to 160 by 300 millimeters. Another thing I did add to the setup is a simple and cheap webcam. This allows the laser to be monitored from a screen, which means we're not looking directly at the laser while it's in use. This adds another layer of protection, but still even with this, wear safety glasses when the machine is on. For the first project, we have the LaserPecker app downloaded on a mobile, and from here we can connect, prepare, and send jobs to the machine. So for this example, we'll select the LaserPecker logo from the clip art icon. This can be moved and repositioned on the screen, and then clicking on preview will give us an outline of the image. Moving the image on the device also gives us a real-time position on the piece of wood, which makes it super quick and easy to set up jobs. Now with a piece of wood set up on the base, there's two red dots to focus. And by using the up and down arrows, these dots are moved closer together. And when they meet together forming one dot, the laser is in focus. So with the file sent to the machine, we can set up the engraving settings and start the job. This is engraved with the default basswood settings using the 450 nanometer 10 watt blue diode laser at 39% power and at 86% depth. The job is completed in 44 seconds and the result turned out really well. Now there was a bit of smoke and burnt wood smell in the room, so we're going to install the air purifier unit to help remove unwanted smells and smoke. Inside the unit is a filter cartridge that has a four stage filter system with a cotton pre-filter, a HEPA filter and an active carbon filter and a second HEPA filter at the bottom. For the connection, one tube connects to the back of the protective cover on the laser then into the top port of the back of the air filter. A second tube connects to the bottom port, and this can be then ducted outdoors. Now we just need to plug in the cable and turn on the power switch. At the front, the power and fan speed is adjusted by the plus and minus buttons. There's four levels to choose from, and this is displayed with a blue LED light bar. Running the same tests again, there was a huge improvement in smoke and fume reduction, and there was hardly any smell at all. The air purifier worked really well, but one thing that might need to be updated on the unit is the blue LED light to a different colour. As when wearing the goggles, these block out blue light, so apart from hearing the sound, visually it was hard to tell what level the purifier was on. While the machine can be used with the LaserPecker app, it can also be used with the free LaserPecker Design Space software, or even with Lightburn if you prefer. The LaserPecker Design Space software is easy to use and with a basic user-friendly layout. On the left, we can use the tools to draw, import an image, add text, create QR codes or barcodes, create shapes and insert clip art. So with a picture added, we can adjust the effect, trace an image to give us an outline and this can be filled for engraving. And then an offset can be added to cut out the design. There's plenty of basic tools that allow you to prepare files for engraving. Now with a file prepared and the machine connected, there's a list of preset material settings to choose from, and we can fine tune settings for the power and speed. Now for the speed, this is displayed as a depth percentage, but it's also good to see there's the millimeters per second listed, which I prefer to use. For the next test, we're engraving this detailed cat design onto one of the included aluminium business cards. This is engraved using the 1064 infrared laser and using the aluminium oxide setting with an 8K resolution, 100% power, and a 30% depth. <music> this
This took about two minutes to complete, and at this high resolution, the final result produced was an impressive, super crisp and clean image. A few more projects I completed with a 10 watt blue dyed laser was engraving a design onto a lid of a box, and this was set with 1K resolution with 80% power and a 72% depth, or 324mm per second. The design turned out well, looking nice and clean. Once completing this, I also thought it would be a good idea to engrave a thank you note on the inside of the box lid. And using the same settings, this gave an excellent result. Sticking with the blue laser for another test, I engraved a cork coaster with a setting of 1K resolution, 20% power and at 758mm per second. It's another quick and easy project that turned out well. Now for a few more quick tests with the 2 watt 1064 infrared laser. The first one is engraving a clip art image onto a small heatsink. This is engraved at a 1K resolution with 100% power and at a 81% depth or 152mm per second. It's interesting to see these small engravings and a great way to customise items. The next test is engraving onto a black piece of acrylic to make a key tag. The settings used for this are the default acrylic settings with a 4K resolution, 36% power, 72% depth or 92.2 millimetres per second. The text on the acrylic looks nice and the laser produced a good result. So the rotary attachment allows us to engrave on curved surfaces. This is a really well designed part. It has an adjustable angle as well as adjustable clamps. There's different shaped and sized clamps included that attach onto the tool that are good for holding small and large objects. When engraving on longer round objects, there's also an adjustable roller that can be used to help support the item. To use the rotary attachment, the riser block is installed to reposition the laser unit higher. This gives us a bit more room to work with under the laser. Then we just need to plug in a few cables and a rubber block is placed under the rotary tool to keep it level. So to test out the rotary, we're engraving a logo onto this coated stainless steel water bottle. As it was the first attempt with the rotary tool, I used some masking tape on the bottle to double check the logo would be centered. With everything looking good, the tape is removed and the job is started. For the engraving, we have the 2 watt 1064 infrared laser set to a 2K resolution at 67% power and at a 20% depth or at a 1307mm per second. It took about 12 minutes to complete and the finished result for the first attempt was way better than expected. I'm pleased with the results and the logo is nice and clean with sharp details and probably my favourite project completed with the LP4. There's also a slider bed attachment that expands the working area to 300 to 160 millimetres. This slider can be used for engraving onto larger sized objects or even used for batch processing. The next test is engraving an aeroplane image onto a plywood board and for this we're using the 10 watt blue diet laser with 67% power with a 30% depth or a 2002 millimetres per second. The engraving took about 9 minutes to complete and the finished project gave a nice result that looks good. Overall the LP4 was easy to set up and use and the modular design allows it to be set up for different engravings and it produced some great results that I was happy with. 
Both the slider and the rotary attachments work well with the laser and expand the capabilities of the machine. I do wish it was fully enclosed just like the optional accessory for the newest and more powerful LP5 model. As with most lasers, it does produce a bit of smoke and fumes when in use, and while the fan on the protective cover removes most of it out to the back, I'd recommend getting the air purifier if you're planning on using it indoors. So if you're wanting to mainly engrave wood and metal with a smaller, portable form factor, I think the LP4 is a versatile and useful machine. <laughs>